What's up guys? Today we're talking about how to avoid making mistakes when you're buying used cars. Uh, as an auto broker, we buy used cars all over the country and we have to look at specific items so that we don't make mistakes when we're buying these cars. Today, I'm going to share those with you in this video starting right now. Okay, guys, so today we're using an, an example. It's a 2022 Honda Pilot with only 39,000 miles. So we're going to just, just imagine that you're trying to buy yourself a used car and you're on Auto Trader or you're looking around trying to find a car. Uh, this is what we go through as auto brokers. We want to look at these vehicles and use all the information we can to make sure we're making a good decision before we purchase the vehicle and what to look out for uh, when you're doing this. So take a look at this vehicle. It's a 22 Honda Pilot. It's sitting at auction. Um, and I'm going to break out some pictures of this vehicle. So most of the time when you're looking for a vehicle, you're looking at pictures. You're on the internet and you're looking at what this vehicle looks like. Uh, so that's the first thing. It's got to be aesthetically pleasing. So this is what we do. We look at these vehicles and we're like, oh, this looks like a good car for us because the pictures are really nice. But these vehicles tell a deeper story once you start digging into their history and where they're from. First, let's go ahead and go through the pictures. We're looking all over this vehicle to see if it's got damage. I can see something's going on in the front quarter panel here. Uh, front fender, front bumper, looks like it's got a crack in it. If you can't see it, it's right down here. Uh, that's something that you, know, you can miss if you're taking a look at these used cars. Uh, we're gonna keep going around this vehicle. It's got black rims. Um, this is an SE, I believe, but just taking a look at the vehicle to see, to see there's curb rash on the wheels. How much is that going to cost? You have to calculate these things when you're looking at the cars, right? Um, let's see. Interior pictures aren't super good, but there's enough data for us to make a decision on if the car is clean or not, or if it's going to need a lot of uh, reconditioning or repairs. So that's the first thing I would say is make sure you're looking through the car uh, and the pictures tell a story. It's going to tell you exactly what's going on with the condition of this vehicle. And you can start piecing the story together. Now, the next thing we're going to go through is the Carfax report. We have to spend money as an auto broker to do this. If you're doing this on your own, you would have to purchase your own Carfax report. A lot of dealers, if you're finding the vehicle at a dealership, will have a Carfax included. So you can click on, on the website and take a look at it. But let's bring this up. So as you can see, the Carfax at the very top says that this vehicle has been in an accident. There are 15 service records since it was put into service and it has one open recall. Um, it has had two types of owners. Uh, the owners were personal lease and personal. So that's all fine. Accident was reported in eight, nine of 23. If you look at the screen here, airbags did not deploy. When I find vehicles that have been in accidents, it does not always rule them out. However, if it does say airbags, airbags did deploy, that is a dead stop for me. I'm not interested in that vehicle anymore. Now we're going to scroll down and go through if the vehicle's been in a total loss, if it has structural damage, airbag deployment, and an odometer check. No issues, all green check marks, as you can see here. Then we're going to go down and look at accident, accident damage. And you can see it says accident reported on 8-9-23, and it also has a manufacturer recall. That's okay. Any damaged brands, odometer brands, nothing there. So now we can continue to scroll down and it's going to tell us where this vehicle has been. The first owner was in Minnesota. The second owner was in Arkansas. Estimated miles driven per year for the first owner, 24,330 miles a year. Quite a few miles per year. I'm going to keep scrolling down and here's where you can see where the interval uh, maintenance was done and completed on the vehicle. All the little wrench marks you see, or where that vehicle was serviced and when and what they did to the vehicle. Okay, so then we get down to the accident part of the vehicle and you can see it has damage to rear, airbags did not deploy. This can happen in the parking lot. So that's something that doesn't alarm me too much. It's just something that you should take note of. All right, so these, this is the first step to ruling in or out a vehicle when you're trying to find one to purchase for a client if you're an auto broker or to purchase for yourself if you're a consumer. Uh, and then having this data is really important because it gives us, it tells us a, a, a better story about the vehicle. It's a 22. 
and it was in Minnesota for a great part of its life. So they use a lot of things that cause rust to vehicles in Minnesota. So that's something that you would want to look at as well. When I look at the pictures of this particular vehicle, it doesn't look that bad. However, if you're looking at older vehicles that are like, you know, 16, 17, 18, if they've been in Minnesota, New York, Pennsylvania, a lot of times they will have uh, rust damage. One last thing to talk about on the Carfax report, guys, is the warranty check. So if you, you have the history report here and then you have the warranty check button here, three years, 36,000 miles, bumper to bumper, that's what the basic warranty is on these vehicles. That coverage is expired. It's a 22, it's not three years old, However, it has 39,000 miles, so that coverage is expired. The drivetrain, 60 months or 60,000 miles, it has 39 months remaining and about 20,000 miles left of coverage on the vehicle. So that's going to be internally lubricated parts of the engine and transmission and the all-wheel drive system. So that's important to note when you're looking at vehicles to make sure that you're getting one that has the proper coverage that you want it to have. That's also where you can see the vehicle's uh, one vehicle with 40,000 miles is worth less money than one that's, that has 39,000 miles. Or when you're looking around the marketplace, this is an easy way to tell why some of these vehicles just cost more because it has more protection for the buyer and it's just less problems if you run into an issue. Now, once we get through the aesthetics of the vehicle and we make sure it looks the way we want it to look, it's not too beat up. And we look at the Carfax report to see if it's had any major accidents, airbags deployed, stuff like that. Then we move on to the condition report of the vehicle. Now, this is going to be something that's a tool that auto brokers use and dealers use to assess uh, the re reconditioning of a vehicle. You may not find this if you're looking for this on your own uh, on Auto Trader or Car Gurus or anything like that. But I'm going to show it to you today so you can get a look at what we're talking about. A condition report shows us a lot of information. 16 damages, if you can see here on the condition report. Click that button. It shows me an overview of the vehicle, bumper damage, fender damage, like we showed you in the picture earlier where that crack was on the bumper. How much is that going to cost? I know because I'm a dealer and I deal with this stuff all the time. But if you're, if you're just getting into this or if you're looking for a car yourself, that can be something that could cost you thousands and you not even know it. Uh, now we're going to scroll down and look at the list of damage on the vehicle. Front bumper cover, broken replacement required. Uh, Lower bumper cover is broken as well. Hood has multiple paint chips and damage. Can you see what I'm saying here, guys? Like you don't see this stuff when you're looking at the pictures, but when you start looking at what's going on here, there's lots of reconditioning costs that are starting to pile up. Curb rash on the wheel, six to seven inches. That I know cost me about $135, but for you in public, it might cost you 250 bucks. Um, left rear tire, worn, replacement required. So why is one tire worn and need a, needs replacement? You know, that, that's interesting. So maybe they haven't done the proper um, tire rotations on the vehicle, which is causing stuff uh, to wear out faster than it should. Right rear tires worn, replacement required. So anyhow, we, we go back up to the top and look at tires. Tires remaining are 330 seconds and 430 seconds. End of the story. This vehicle needs four tires. So you're looking at $800 to $1,000 in order to get good tires on this vehicle. Other odor, you see that exclamation uh, mark there? So th that means this vehicle has some type of odor in it that we don't know what it is until we get it here. So it doesn't say smoke, but other odor could be mold, mildew. Um, they may have had children in the car, stuff like that. We don't know until we get the vehicle here. So it's important to go through this stuff if you're a broker buying a car for a client. You wanna make sure you're looking at all of these things and making sure you're pricing this into your order so that you can get this stuff fixed when the car arrives. Now, uh, let's see. Next thing we're going to go and look at the equipment to make sure it has enough equipment uh, or has the right equipment, like especially when you're talking about Hondas. They have EX, LX, EXL, EXL, Touring. They have e the Touring Elite, all these different models. And if you don't know exactly what equipment comes on each model, you can go look it up on the websites. Or you look at this report that I have here, and we'll go back to it. This shows us exactly what came on the car when it was purchased. All the manufacturer package information is listed here so that we can check to make sure it has Apple CarPlay, to make sure it has um, adaptive cruise control. All these little things that end up costing a lot of money, or you can't add them to the car at all. 
lane keeping assist, uh, lane keeping departure warning, blind spot monitor, all of these things, you have to be sure and certain that you're getting in writing before you purchase this vehicle or you're making a major mistake. All right, so that is what we call a conditional report on a vehicle. So if you're a consumer and you're thinking, what do auto brokers do for you? We do this. We look at these vehicles to make sure it has the right equipment, it has the right aesthetics, and it doesn't have the damage that we don't want it to have. So we, we check this stuff out and then price it accordingly so you're getting the right car. Okay, to recap, make sure the vehicle has the right aesthetics. You're looking it over to make sure you don't see any visible damage. Then we're going to check out the Carfax report to make sure that aligns with what we're seeing and where the vehicle has been. Then we're going to look at the condition report to make sure we understand exactly what we're getting ourselves into and how much it's going to cost when we buy this vehicle. So if you like what we put out today, please subscribe to the channel. We're going to try and bring you a video every week. I'm Ronnie Haskins. Have a great day.